So my presentation for this meeting was focused on fecal microbiota transplantation for management of recurrent C. diff infection. We all know that one of the biggest challenges for management of C. difficile is the management of recurrent infection. So once patients get one infection, the risk of recurrence is 20%. After two infections, about 40%. And after three or more infections, the risk of recurrence is as high as 60%. The common antibiotic treatments that are available lead to more recurrences because they also cause disruption of the gut microbiome, which is the original reason why people get C. diff infection. So one of the therapies that has been around there for almost a decade now in mainstream medicine is replacing microbes or microbial replacement therapies or microbial re restoration therapies or more commonly known as fecal microbiota transplantation. So my presentation was focused on the literature behind fecal transplant and what we've learned over the years is that FMT or fecal transplantation is effic efficacious more than 85 to 90 percent of times in patients who have this deadly recurrent infection. We've also learned that it doesn't matter what donor it comes from as long as donors are screened rigorously. We've also learned that fresh stool or frozen stool is similarly efficacious to prevent future recurrent C. difficile infection. However, over the years of all the clinical trials and practice that has been done, what we've noticed is that it is heterogeneous, meaning how we store stool, how we process stool, how we select our donors, how we select our patients, how we select the providers who do those procedures is pretty heterogeneous in our population. So what we need to do is we need to streamline this and standardize this therapy. And this for clinical trials come into play. And there are several products that are being studied in clinical trials right now. There's a product called RBX2660, which is an NMA-based study that showed promising results in phase one and phase two clinical trials. The phase two clinical trial was a double-blinded placebo-controlled, and one dose of the NMA was superior to the placebo. And this has now led to a phase three clinical trial. Another product called SCR109 is from Sirius Therapeutics, which has shown promise in phase one clinical trials and a subset of patients in phase two clinical trials and it's now also in phase three trials. The focus of my research which I presented was a newer product called RBX7455 which is a capsule based therapy. The exciting part of that is that it's a capsule which is li lyophilized and is room temperature stable. So most of the other products that are available for C. diff management are ones that have to be frozen at 70 degrees below zero. So most of us don't have those kinds of freezers to store those products. So this uh, technology allows patients to store the product at home on the shelf, not even needing refrigeration, and can allow multiple day dosing. So with a phase one study, which was an open label, non-blinded, not placebo controlled study, we wanted to do a dose finding study. What we did in this study was we took patients who had two or more episodes of C. diff infection and had completed therapies for C. difficile with antibiotics. About 24 to 72 hours after stopping antibiotics, they received the dose of the capsule. The first cohort received four capsules twice a day for four days. The second cohort received four capsules twice a day for two days. And the third cohort received two capsules twice a day for two days. With the first cohort, the success rate was 90%. In the second cohort, the success rate was 80%. In the third cohort, uh, there was a 100% success rate. If you combine all those three uh, amongst 30 patients, the overall success rate was 90%. These patients did not have a future recurrence of the C. difficile. We also looked at adverse events. There were some, but those were transient, and none were directly attributable to the product. Um, we also looked at gut microbiome changes, meaning are you able to re-establish diverse gut microflora, and we saw that bacteria that were important such as bacteroides and clostridia went up and bacteria that were considered as harmful even you have C. difficile infections such as gamma proteobacteria or bacilli went down. So overall um, the field is moving towards standardized therapies. I think in the future in the next few years we'll have one or more of these standardized therapies approved by the FDA and they'll probably replace conventional donor-directed microbiome therapies. So the next step for this product would be to do a placebo-controlled trial to see if uh, the findings that we have noticed in the initial trial will pick one of the three doses, and that information is proprietary right now, which dose we're gonna pick. We'll pick one of the three doses, and then we'll do a placebo-controlled trial where one group would get the actual product, the other group would get placebo. And we'll see if the 
uh, efficacy holds up in a placebo-controlled trial would be the next step.